Good morning, everybody. Good morning. August 19, August 19, 2020. It's a Wednesday morning. And what is that? I should have been in TAC today. Sorry? I should have been in Thomas Aquinas. <laughs> okay, well, okay. Okay, today, today we are commenting on the gospel from St. Matthew, chapter 20, verses 1 to 16. This is a very long gospel, and it has to do with, you know, um, We'll read a little bit about it, up to a point, okay? So Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them to his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, You too, go into the vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. In other words, he hired the people who were just standing around the marketplace, asked them to go to his vineyard, and he hired them and promised them, a decent wage going out about five o'clock this was already well practically the end of the day he found others still found others standing around and said to them why do you stand here idle all day they answered because no one has hired us and so he said, okay, then you two go into the vineyard. I'll hire you. You two go into the vineyard. Okay, let's stop there. But, the, you know, this parable continues and talks about how Jesus, I mean Jesus, the landowner started paying uh, the wage that he agreed with, right? And that uh, they were all lining up at the end of the day, all, all lining up to receive their pay. And whatever was paid to the first people who were hired was the same pay that was given to the last person was hired they were all treated equally and why was that well because they all agreed to be paid that wage to begin with right so and then but some complain and said wait a minute why did you pay the guys who came last the same way you pay the guys who came first and our lord said well why you all agreed to that kind of a wage right didn't you agree with me that to be paid that wage so i paid you justly because that's what we agreed upon okay anyway but that's not what we are going to comment about today in this gospel. We're going to comment about that line where the landowner asks, Why do you stand here idle all day? Why do you stand idle all day? Jesus is telling us this is a bad thing to do. Okay? You cannot be idle. Idleness is a bad thing. What is idleness? Not doing anything. Not doing anything. Doing nothing, which is, of course, an oxymoron, right? Because you cannot do nothing, right? That's the, that's the, that's the, uh, the irony behind idleness, okay? Nobody, no one can do nothing because doing means entails action it entails some productive activity and productivity productiveness is cannot be comp, uh, cannot be doing nothing it's not it's not the same as doing nothing not from nothing nothing comes so you cannot really do nothing most of the time when somebody's idle, it is actually, <laughs> he's actually doing something that he's not supposed to do, right? It's actually entertaining some sort of activity that is unproductive, 
unproductive. And instead of doing what he's supposed to do, he's doing something else that is less of the expectation, that is less of what he should be actually doing. Okay? So that's really what idleness is all about. It is not being productive according to the way you were expected to be productive. You are not living up to the expectations of productivity that you are expected to exhibit. So the state of being unproductive is a bad state. It's a bad situation. Why? Because number one, man was created to work. Okay? Man is a creature created to work. We go back to Genesis and we read, well, God created man in his own image. In the image of man, he created them. He told them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle and all the animals that crawl on the earth. The Lord God took the man, placed in the garden, eat until and keep it, right? <laughs> that thing is stuck right here like anything. I memorize it very well. Man was created to work. <clears throat> Man has a mission to do in this world. He was entrusted by God himself to manage the rest of creation. And that's a lot of work to do. So to be idle, not to be engaged in that kind of productive activity all the time, is a violation of the very nature of man. It is a violation of the reason why God created man. God created man to be his instruments to develop creation in order to bring it back to the feet of God, to the feet of Jesus Christ, to serve God, our creator. Man is the main agent okay, who works with God and for God to make that happen. So if we are idle, if we don't use all the talents and all the, the, uh, the, the energies and, and the, uh, the uh, means that God gave us to do the work he has given us to do, we are being unproductive in the manner God had intended us to be productive. So it's not good, okay? Not good to be idle. So we need to work. Work is very much part of the nature of of man man is a working uh, creature that's the very reason why um, why we work why we study why we do our chores why we uh, serve others in one capacity or another everybody is expected to do some form of productive work okay <clears throat> okay so that is why idleness is a bad thing. We always have to be occupied. We always have to be engaged in some productive endeavor. That way we live up to our nature as human beings. Anybody who does not work is not living up to that very nature for which he was created by God. So not good. Okay. Now. Look at the kind of excuse that these people who were there standing idle in the marketplace give the landowner when he was asked, why are you standing all day idle? Look at the excuse. You remember the excuse they gave? What do they say? Huh, Joe? Because no one has hired, no one has hired us. Hey, <laughs> What a lame excuse, right? They were saying, well, you know, we're doing nothing. We're just staying here because no one has hired us. What a pathetic situation. What a lame excuse. Well, you know what? That is bad. We cannot blame others for the situations we, are, we, we find ourselves in. We cannot blame others for a lack of productivity. We cannot always point a finger on other people when we are in a bad situation. Why? Because that only means we had not taken the initiative 
We have not used the creativity, the talents that God has given each and every one of us to do some form of productive work. Okay? God has endowed us with talents. God has endowed us with the, with the intellect and the will, the wherewithal, to do productive work. We cannot give excuses and point fingers on other people and say, well, nobody hired me. Nobody asked me to do anything. Nobody told me to contribute. Nobody told me to help. Nobody told me to serve. That's why I'm just here scratching my belly in idleness. <laughs> well, no, no, no. We, we cannot do that. That is very, very bad. Eh? God gave us the smarts, the talents. We got to put it in good use. <clears throat> and, and God gave us the eyes to see and to look around us and to find things to do. We have to take the initiative to be productive, to do things, and not just wait to be told. You know, uh, plenty of people are like this, uh, especially uh, plenty of children are like this. Plenty of people in the workforce are like this. They can't lift a finger unless they're supervised to do something. They can't take initiative to do something unless they're told. Right? So like you kids, for example, you don't have to wait for Papa to say, Hey, you didn't do your chores again. Hey, go sweep the floor. Oh, get do, do the trash. Oh, do the this, do that. Nah, -uh. you're not being responsible if you have to wait to be told to do your chores. The same thing happens. At work, right? You find a lot of people who are just lazing around, you know, doing nothing in their, on their desks or on their stations at work. And they're only waiting, 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 waiting to be told what to do. Well, that is very, very bad. See, you cannot be like that. People uh, uh, were, were endowed with enough, enough, more than enough smarts and intelligence and rationality to be able to take initiatives, to be creative at work and make things that are productive, that are going to produce fruit, that are going to contribute to the betterment of life's situations or work situations. Okay? The reason why a lot of people uh, 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 why, why a lot of problems crop up, for example, in, a work, in the workplace, it's because those who are supposed to use their heads are not using their heads to solve their problems in the workplace. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, you know what? I, 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 uh, I just know this too well. I mean, I, I have worked with hundreds of companies in the past as a consultant, and... Um, a lot of times, the problems that uh, the companies have boils down to one thing, and that is people are not using their heads to solve their problems. People are just waiting around for whoever might <laughs> find a solution to the problems that they are encountering at work. If only people use their heads all the time and not be idle and not just coast along like, you know, problems will solve themselves. You will have less problems at work. But anyway, so that's why same thing I tell you, kids. Same thing that I tell you. You always need to use your heads. Solve the little problems that you encounter in doing your chores, in doing your schoolwork, in doing things around the house. Use your head because God gave you enough smarts. God gave you a head. God gave you a brain. Okay? Let's use it. Let's use it. Okay? Idleness. <laughs> Idleness doesn't serve your purpose. And you cannot blame others and say, Well, nobody to told, told me to use my head. Nobody told, nobody hired me. Uh -uh. Enough with excuses. Enough with excuses. Let's be productive. Let us use our intelligence. Let us use our head to find productive things to do and to solve our own problems at work, okay? So idleness is very bad. Let us not fall into that, 
into that lazy, it's actually a consequence of laziness, okay? lazy, idle tendency to do nothing. The other side of this is that when we are idle, or we are wasting the precious, precious gift of time that God has given us. You see, we live in time. We live in a, oh, I have my sidekick wanting to come up here. Say hi. <laughs> okay, we live in time, right? We have, we have a limited time on earth to be able to, to do the, the mission that God has entrusted us to perform in this life. We have to make good use of our time. We cannot be idle. We cannot waste the time and the resources that God has given us to do productive work. Okay? To bring back all of creation to the feet of Jesus Christ. Okay, the last point I'd like to make here is, and you've heard me say this many times, there is a saying, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. Okay? An idle mind is the devil's workshop. The devil likes you to be idle. The devil doesn't want you to be preoccupied with thinking about good things and good things to do and things that you ought to do. Why? Because an idle mind, an unproductive mind is a fertile ground for temptation. When there's nothing that occupies your mind, you're not thinking about doing things productively, then that is the perfect opportunity for the devil to come around and tempt you to do many stupid things, many bad things. See? So that is why, uh, that is why we put the means not to be idle. We put the means in order to avoid the tendency to be idle. Always be busy. Always keep busy. And you know, you parents, you parents, let us... What's going on? Oh, my alarm set off. Okay. Um, you, you parents, for example, you know, <laughs> I, I know that this happens in many homes where children are left idle. Doing nothing. Doing nothing where, for example? In their bedrooms. If you let your children while away, uh, while away time in their bedrooms, you can be sure that a lot of the time they spend in their bedrooms will be idle, unproductive, and in many occasions, an occasion for sin. An occasion for the devil to get the better of them. That is why here in, our, in the Kleachko household, the bedroom is only used for two purposes. To sleep, to dress up, get dressed and get groomed. Okay? We have a strict prohibition for our own children not to spend time in the bedroom because of that one very important reason. That is why, unless they're there to dress up or get groomed or do something related to any of that activity, or unless they're about to sleep, the bedroom is not a place for them to be. We don't allow them to stay in the bedroom for that purpose. And that has helped our own children be trained to avoid idleness and to always be busy and productive and make good use of their time. Now, the other thing that parents have to do is to actually provide their children things to do, okay? The problem with many parents is that they don't even program what their children do. They, they, they allow their children to just, yeah, you know, okay, it's a weekend or whatnot. Okay, go ahead, do what you want to do. Uh, you know, here in the Kleachko household, we live by a schedule. From the moment we wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning to the time we go to bed at 9 o'clock, that day is filled with activities. Filled with activities. Very little time is open for so-called 
free time. Yeah, they have 10 minutes here, 15 minutes there, but it's really more like a period of transition between one activity and another. And we try our best not to leave long periods of time where our own children will be left, you know, idle or to fend for themselves. Because I understand what that can do. I understand the evil of idleness. So if you parents want to learn a thing or two about helping your children not to be idle, well, fill up their day with some very productive activities. And it doesn't always mean school. It doesn't always mean, uh, you know, play. I mean, you got to mix, you got to mix it up, you know, like, in our days, we have these commentaries. We have reading time, which we do together. We have band playing time. We have taekwondo time. We have swimming time. We have chore time. Um, what else? Uh, uh, school time, of course. Sleeping time, of course. But everything is regulated in that sense, you know, with a schedule so that there is no room for idleness, okay? Let's, uh, let's take a, get, pick up that schedule a little bit. We'll just show an example of what we do. So that, uh, you know, of course, I don't know if you can see this, if you can read this, but there it says daily schedule, right? And you can see that there, everything is, is timed. See? From the moment we wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning, that's rice, prepare for breakfast, everything is there, all the way to bedtime at 9.15. That's our... Schedule in this time of pandemic. <laughs> See? So everything is there. Everything is there. There's no time for idleness. Uh, you know, you can make a rundown. What you can see there for our schedules. You can see okay? every minute of the day is filled up. Okay? Including prayer time is there. Of course, this is the reverse. You can see it in reverse. But you can see that... Uh, even prayer time, even uh, meal time is scheduled. Everything is scheduled. And that way, you help your own children fight idleness. Okay, that's it for us, folks. Thank you for accompanying us this morning. And my little sidekick will say bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> bye, Eva. Okay, bye-bye, everybody. Have a good day. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.